Welcome to Ravencast episode 12. Today we'll be talking about the dangers of amusement parks. And these stories do get really dark. This story was recommended to me by my good friend Glitch Hunter. Shout out to him. He showed me this video. I'm like, you know what? We gotta cover it on the show because these amusement parks definitely need to be better at safety measures and as well as taking accountability because a lot of these stories did like these accidents happen these people dying and a lot of these amusement parks are like oh it's not my fault they take no accountability and some of them don't even get shut down because of it and they get away with basically murder and i understand like not like of course like running a theme park is definitely like hard because you know you gotta like you know make it fun but at the same time make it safe like accidents are gonna happen no matter what but when accidents happen, you just got to take accountability and do better instead of just saying, oh, it's not our fault. You feel me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of these music parks, like, I'm kind of, like, after watching this video that we're about to cover, I don't even want to go to a amusement park anymore, to be honest, because I feel like if I go or I take a friend or I take a loved one or I take my kids there or some shit one of us is gonna go because a lot of these rides like like don't even like pra- like practice safety precautions or anything like one story that we're covering in this because there's five stories in this video one of the stories um the employees knew something was wrong but they just let the ride go anyways and then that woman ended up dying because of it but we can go ahead and play that. Well, actually, before we do, what's your opinions on amusement parks? Would y'all go to amusement park right now? I'll go first. Uh, honestly, me personally, I, I do not like amusement parks. Never have. I, I know what goes I on. I liked amusement them. parks when I was younger. Like, I used to go to this one called Dollywood when I used to live in Tennessee and um it was actually fun i used to go there every year and actually like they actually had like safety precautions and shit they made sure you know you had your seat belts on and shit and like i never died off the ride so yeah that shit was fun well we have to hope you didn't die if you <laughs> you never know i could be a ghost i could be a ghost <laughs> right now <laughs> well if you're a ghost you're one of the most pissed poor ghosts i've ever seen in my entire life now as, far, now, as far as I'm concerned from my experience, I grew up, uh, like I've told people before on my channel, I grew up going to Six Flags. I worked at Six Flags. Amusement parks has been one of my childhood things. And I, uh, I even got to go to Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida, and that was one of my favorite Same times. Um, I didn't go to Disney World, but I did get to see the fireworks there as well, and I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, as far as I'm concerned... Even though some of these stories I'm probably going to be very familiar with, they've never turned me off from amusement parks because I've, I've accepted it just like I've accepted driving cars that I run the risk of dying every single time. Because that's the unfortunate inevitability with everything is that you've got a certain chance, whether it's high or low, you've got that chance of dying even if you because right now with just me sitting here right now i could just have a heart attack for no reason and drop dead so all three it, of us could like literally all three of us could die literally on recording with y'all seeing that well no yeah. one would ever see the footage uh hopefully and again with hopefully. the news media you never know maybe they'll, <laughs> they'll make up some excuse <laughs> Yeah, that definitely would make some excuse. To, you'll definitely see that footage unless, like, we just die and no one, like, sees, like, leaks it because we're all three dead. But anyways, um, but yeah, we can start the video. Yeah, right, go ahead and go right. fire. Starting. Okay, you ready? Get ready for a chilling journey through some of the most horrific amusement park tragedies ever witnessed. From Fatal Falls... To catastrophic malfunction. Oh yes, it's in here. It's perfect. Amusement park rides will make you think twice before strapping in. That is. And let's discover pause the it real quick. Adrenaline-filled entertainment together. That that particular ride, that's the Batman ride in Six Flags, August 7, in Georgia. 2016. 
Michelle and Scott Schwab of Kansas took their four sons to Schlitterbahn Water Park in Kansas City. It was elected officials day, the one day of the year when the park offered free entry to elected officials and their families. As it happened, Scott Schwab was a Kansas state representative. The kids were more than thrilled at the prospect of spending a day of fun on the water slides. Out of all of them, Caleb, the couple's 10-year-old son, was perhaps the most excited. But what was supposed to be a day of joy turned into the worst possible scenario for any family. At that point, Schlitterbahn was a wonder, mainly because of its main attraction, a water slide called Verrückt, which means insane in German. The water slide had an impressive height of 168 feet and seven inches, at least at that point, made it the tallest water slide in the entire Pause world. It. Wow. So, already I could see some problems with the design right there. Same here, yep. So, Go ahead and see, see if it's the same thing I'm thinking. Uh, Go ahead. So, as far as I'm seeing the design of the ride, I'm, I'm not understanding why there isn't more support beams, first off, holding up the slide itself. Secondly, the way that slope is, that's a lot of G-forces that's going to be hitting the person. And I'm assuming it's the person going through, and there isn't some kind of cage or something to protect the individual. Well, there is um, actually um, there is a cage, but the cage is the one is I'm not trying to spoil it, but the cage is what killed the kid because well, you kind of spoiled it right there, buddy. And he, and he got devastated and he died because the thing was like not even like safe. Like the thing they have is not even safe. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment, but as far as I'm seeing, it doesn't look safe at all, and I you know, I would not I trust know. this. I would not go on this ride particularly, but go ahead, Cold Fire. I would, I would continue. My kid on it, to be honest. Nope. Verrucked was the creation of Jeff Henry, the co-owner of the water park, who had designed the water slide himself. He did a whole job. Fun. It was only natural that ten-year-old Caleb Schwab was eager to ride Verrucked. Verrucked, as tall and towering as it was, had no mm. age restriction despite the fact that a consultant had previously recommended an age limit of 16. As such, Caleb and his older brother, 12-year-old Nathan, were able to experience the ride. Caleb and Nathan let their parents know they wanted to go on Verrucked soon after the family arrived at the park. Scott, their father, asked the two boys to stick together for the day. Caleb agreed, then eagerly headed off with his brother. These would be the very last words father and son exchanged. That is sad. Honestly, I got feel bad for him. The dad. At the top of Verrucked. Nathan was the first one to get into one of the water slide rafts and experience the ride, with Caleb impatiently waiting pause for it. his turn at the pause top it. of the water slide. Then it was Caleb's turn. Go pause for it. Pause Nathan right here. Ah, actually, this is a perfect shot. This has mm -hmm. got to be the most... This is going to be the second, I should say, the second most unsafe water slide next to the Cannonball Loop that was at Action Park. This has got to be because there's nothing. And you see, and it's you an see, open. And you see that, and, you see, and which he gets to it in a minute, but you see that cage right there? That's what kills the boy. That's what, like, the tavic takes him and kills him. That, death, that's the safety nets. Like, that's supposed to help you, but instead, that killed him, bro. Like... Whoever, like, this guy must have been on crack, like, designing this ride. Oh, like, far. A tube, like, like, an actual, like, tube would have been safer than this. See, that's why I don't understand why it wasn't a full tube. Why is it got an yeah. open face? But, uh, continue to call yeah. fire. I'm sure they explain. Uh, quite frankly, uh, me personally, I've uh, just me seeing that I'm not going to be walking my butt back down because I've seen too many rides like that. Yeah, this, this, had, this is never unsafe. Well. This is totally For unsafe. His brother at the bottom of the slide. The ride featured two drops, the first being a 17 story plunge. Riders occupied three person rafts, each weighing 100 pounds, and were required to have a combined weight of no more than 550 pounds to prevent the rafts from lifting off the slide. When it was Caleb's turn to go down the slide, the boy was seated at the front of raft B with two women behind him. Caleb weighed only 73 pounds. Okay, okay, first of all, can you pause it real quick? Why would you sit a kid in front? 
a 10 year old kid just in front by himself like why would the employees do this because i know every water park i went to they would always be like hey it's unsafe for you for you to be up front like that you need to be in the back and let someone bigger be in front or something like they would not like let someone that short up in front like that because that's because he can easily just fall off and boom and see here's the other thing why aren't the parents with them that's what I don't yeah. understand is why isn't the parents with the kid because uh, for example at Six Flags if a kid wants to ride a water ride they have to have their parents with them at all times well, that is required I think it's because I mean to defense in that it's because he's he was with his older brother but I don't know I don't know but why that's not his a guardian with them though in that particular yeah. case that's still not a guardian because I'm assuming the older brother is maybe. 17 at the most no given... no he was 12 he was only 12, yeah that's not a guardian no, like, i don't understand like why would you i, mean, I understand if the kids were like 13 plus yeah I let them run around but and not even like 13 like i don't know like a lot of parents these days like like to let the kids run around and shit and then this shit happens and they wonder well oh, why did why did my kid why did my kid die why did, why did an accident happen i know it's gonna sound like an asshole but it's like this is why you gotta watch your kids because anything can happen even at a water park that you think is safe it's not safe like you gotta always have keep an eye on your children especially as a parent you can never let your kid out of sight and the, uh, the other thing I want to speak to real quick, and then call fire, you should give your opinion as well, is um, the, I also fault the employees because they should have made sure he was with his parents or with a guardian that was there mm-hmm. at the park. The fact they didn't yeah. do that okay. is totally, totally unsafe. That was dis- disrespectful, in my opinion, and probably was illegal. I can't say for sure oh, yeah. it was I, I gotta tell you, but I, I gotta, gotta say, you one, um, I gotta tell you one story, right? Um, this is a late story. I was in an amusement park, right? I was in like this was like was a, uh, this was not a water park, but this is like Dollywood, right? I had like my fourteen year old brother with me and shit, and I was like I think I was like ten, eight, somewhere there, and um, I was walking up the stairs to get on the roller coaster. It was called the Wild Eagle at Dollywood, right? And then the worker's like, where's your, you look too young, um, you need to go get your parent. I'm like, really? They're like, yeah. So I had to, so that, the worker escorted me down, I had to go get my dad, and my dad, and they forced my dad on the ride with me, which he was willing to, because he's like, why not? But yeah, they wouldn't let me ride by myself, because I was like, too short, and they let me on the ride, but I had to have a guardian with me. And I'm also, I've got a story about, a, a story when I was working at Six Flags, that there was some unsafe protocols made, but I'll tell that probably towards the end of this video. So yeah, no, you should tell that because there's cool. a six five story coming up. Yeah, so I'll, when we get to there, I'll tell mine. But uh, Cole Fire, right. you got any opinions before we continue on? Oh yeah, uh, most definitely. They 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 definitely needed to ask the kid where the parents were. That that is most definitely like a far on employees part but not only that but it's like they they should have um he sh- they should have never let the 10 year old buy it like even when i was by i was never really by myself younger like i've always had my brother with me because my dad's like i'm not letting you go on that ride unless your brother's with you so like every like i remember i used to get so mad at my brother because um when we used to go on rides my dad's like you either have to have me or your brother See if your brother wants to go on. I'm like, brother, you want to get on the ride? He's like, fuck no. And I'm like, fuck you. And then I would beg my mom to get on the ride. So childhood was fun. Oh, Amusement parks were fun. But like, like, yeah, it's like you need, especially if you're under 13, you definitely need parent supervision. Well, you know, uh, and if buffs about it. Uh, a quick story, and then we should continue the video. Uh, yeah, go ahead. When I was... Um, when I was going to Six Flags when I was a kid, I was drug on every ride. There was only like two rides when I was younger that I liked. It was the Great American Scream Machine, and the other one was uh, Batman. The one that uh, terrified me the most was Superman or Goliath. Originally, Goliath I had no problem with until I found out how tall it was when I first rode it. That's when I realized, oh, this is not meant for me. I hate really tall rides. Um mm-hmm. 
the Superman story real quick. Uh, in 2018, when I was working there, me and my brother Wolking showed up very early for Fright Fest because we were scare actors. So we went and got food, ate pizza, and then decided it was a smart idea to get on the Superman ride. So we get on, and <laughs> we hook up. And as they're taking us up the hill, Woken goes, whatever you do, don't look down. I said, you're a sorry little bastard. <laughs> that's when I dropped. That's when we hit the drop. I'm like, ah! Ah! <laughs> I'm sure everybody underneath has heard that, you sorry bastard. <laughs> I, I used to do the same thing to my brother. Uh, anyhow, let's continue the video. All right. Two women, an important factor in the tragedy that was just about to play out. It all happened so fast. Holy shit. On the chute and over the first hill. It went airborne on the second hill. Caleb was thrown against the netting designed to wow. prevent riders from being thrown from the ride, striking a metal pole. The young boy was decapitated instantly. Witnesses below watched in horror as Caleb's body descended the chute, leaving a bloody trail on the slide. To make Whoa. matters worse, Nathan, Caleb's older brother by two years, saw the entire tragedy unfold. He screamed in terror, saying his brother flew from the slide. Can you pause it just a minute? I have a question. I know I'll probably ask this, but why was it at least, why was it the brother like on the same ride as him? That's what I wondered. Like... We, Holy we, when we were still shit. Stick together, we had to stick together. Uh, I, I want to read this like, part real quick. Is that a good question? That's a very good question. You don't mind if I read this part real quick? Go ahead. Let's see. The family, his older brother Nathan, who was 12, witnessed the tragedy while one of the bystanders kept uh, Michelle away, telling her she did not want to see the body. Wow. Just Wow. I am at a fucking loss of words. I am at a loss of words. What the flying fuck? It's things like this that piss me off. Because it's the lack of safety, the lack of care, and a horribly designed ride. Yeah. What the flying fuck? Oh, it gets fuck. worse. It gets way worse. I pre-watched this. It gets way okay, and you also see the response to it too after. Oh, I'm sure so I'm going to get pissed. The boy's mother desperately tried you to will. Caleb, but she was stopped by other witnesses who knew the sight would be too devastating for any mother. The boy's father, Scott, repeatedly asked if his son was dead. Scott was in shock. When he heard that Caleb was indeed dead, he was overwhelmed with grief. As emergency services attended to the other women on the raft, the Schwab family was left to grapple with their immense grief. Returning home in a daze, questions arose about how and why Caleb had died. An investigation into the incident provided some answers to the devastated family. First off, there was the matter of Caleb and his weight. His being seated at the front of raft B created an uneven weight distribution. To top yep. things off, other just like I brought up earlier, went to Raft B having a tendency to go abnormally fast and airborne, far more often than other rafts. Even more, safety concerns had plagued Verruckt from the start. Verruckt was designed by people with no background in mechanical engineering. As such, it was created with the use of trial and error methods, and not engineering practices. Pause it. During pause testing, it. Pause it. Pause it. Became evident. That pause it. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Not a single motherfucker on this whole team had at least a high school level of education on mechanical engineering? Not on one of these motherfuckers. What Not at the all. flying fuck? Why did, and, and, okay, even with that, let's let's say you don't need that, right? Even though that's totally fucking stupid to think that way. But let, let, let's say, let's say I design one, right? And I don't have any of that education. Let, let's say I design it. I would have thought to fucking hook that raft to the ride so the raft wouldn't bounce up. No matter what, it would be stuck to a chain that would pull it through the ride and you would just get splashed with water. I would have never fucking let it run like that. So why the fuck didn't these three gentlemen think that? And they're older than me. They gotta be the least what in their fucking uh, the gentleman with the beard's gotta oh, be at least the in thing, his fifties. Um, 
But you gotta understand, right? They're thinking about the cash grab. They're not thinking about safety. Unfortunately, they probably are. Un fucking believable. There's not enough Jack Daniels in my coat to deal with this stupidity. Un fucking believable. Let, let, let's continue the video. Oh, God. Cold fire, let's continue the video. God. That the ride had severe issues with rafts frequently going airborne and the ride proving dangerously fast. Videos of sandbags flying off rafts during testing went viral before the ride opened, prompting wow. co-creator Jeff Henry. First of all, why? Safe Hold on, pause it real quick. I know, I know, but pause it real quick. Why the fuck would you use sandbags to, te to test ride that? Sandbags and body weight are totally different. Like, bro, they are so, not thinking at all. So... To be fair, that's actually a pretty common practice. What they'll do is they'll take crash test dummies and they'll tape on sandbags because sandbags uh, can represent a similar weight to the human body, and that's often what they'll do. In this particular case, they should have had it ta attached to crash test dummies. That would have been the best way with test crash test dummies with sandbags attached to the chest, back and front of the chest. And attached to the thighs of the dummy, and to and smaller bags attached to the arms. Mm -hmm. That was the best way to determine. And they should have used at least two adult size and two child size for each side of it, and determine what the correct waist balance would have been to properly ride it. Clearly, all they did was just do bags in the middle of the boat, and. It obviously didn't fucking work because, like I said before, no education in mechanical engineering. And how come someone who's never had any education in that somehow knows more than these fuckers who are older than me who built the fucking ride? Three of us know more than these fuckers because these fuckers didn't know shit. They just just want cash grab. That's all it is. They didn't care about no one's safety. They just want the money. They were thinking about the cheese. They wasn't thinking about anything else. So that's the thing. It's okay to think about the money, but you also got to think about, like, you got to do it right. You got to do your job right as well, because that's how you're going to get the money. Because you will lose that money. Because that's the thing. They had to shut down the ride after this. Well, yeah, we'll get to those portions in a minute. But, Kofar, you want to add anything to that before we continue the video? Yeah, uh, quite frankly, uh, but I'm just astounded how little they flat street flat out knew about any engineering whatsoever <sighs> nope they didn't because, that's the problem is like because even a random person that done maintenance don't have got a of any degree of repairing stuff would know not to do certain things like that <laughs> Anyone who has any like general education when it comes to mechanical engineering or engineering in general, or engineering even mechanic, general. like anyone who's ever been like a car mechanic, probably would know more than these motherfuckers. I know more, and I'm weld. I got welding background, so like. Oh yeah, see, you will fully understand how rides are built and why certain things are done a certain way. So, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm fucking believable with these people. My man. Let, let's continue the video. So unbelievable. It's like, I don't even, look, let me tell you something. Like, I have experience in none of that, right? And I feel like I know more than them. Because at least I know that you need a full tube to run, like, a lot of slide. You can't just have that open. Yeah. So, like, like you. Because that. that's how, you know, you fly up and shit. And that's what happened. He flew up and got dismantled. So the thing is, you can have an open water tube, but the thing is, you have to design the raft in a certain way where the person is buckled down so they can't get out when they're on the ride, while the ride's mm -hmm. operating. And the boat or raft or whatever it is that's just carrying them needs to be connected to the ride. For for an yep. example, a quick example, and then we need to continue on, because I don't want to make this uh, two hour long bitch fest for me. Uh, uh, one of the Six Flags rides that got shut down multiple times for maintenance and repair every year was a little boat ride, and the way it worked was that you got on this boat, 
and you had a little belt that looped around from one end to the other, and it held both people down. It held four people, and the boat would get taken up a slide, an open face slide. The chain would let go, and you would slide down, go down the other end, splash into the water, and that's it. It was open faced. No one got injured. No one got hurt. The reason why they did maintenance was to make sure, because it was a water ride, steel tends to rust underneath water. Well, corrode, I should say. So they would replace the chains and replace the motors. Was that Dollywood? you just described was literally is literally how the river rampages ran on dollywood like they have to do maintenance but because of the water stuff but like they have you go up the chain lets go you go on the slide you splash in the water no one gets hurt yeah and that's the way this ride should have been designed was around that premise not whatever the fuck they were decided they wanted to do but anyhow Go far. Continue playing the video, please. Oh, that's the thing, um, right? I think I know why they did it because they, in their head, they're like, "Oh, we can create the best water ride ever." So they created something super tall, and they're like, "We can make this super fun." And they was not thinking about any safety precautions whatsoever. Because if they were, is would have made it like this, not at all. No, not at all. But anyhow, go far. Continue playing the video. All right, you can continue, right. Coal Fire. Despite warnings from an engineering firm about the ride's hazards, it opened to the public with riders going airborne and hitting the netting. Caleb's tragic passing prompted other park visitors to come forward with their own stories of the ride. As it turned out, some 13 riders suffered injuries such as concussions and slipped herniated discs. Holy shit! In early 2017, the Schwab family settled with Schlitterbahn and other parties for approximately $20 million. Verrucht was dismantled, and the Kansas City Park closed on September 3, 2018. In March 2018, Jeff Henry, along with two other individuals, were indicted on charges including second-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter, but the charges were dropped the following year due to alleged illegal evidence. Oh, fucking course. I do not July understand. July 26, 2017. Story 2. Tyler Jarrell and his girlfriend, Keziah Lewis. A cute couple. At the Ohio State Fair for an exciting day of fun. After Pause it real quick. Extremely taxing morning. I've heard of this price. This is this story. I've heard of it. This is the reason why I will never go to festivals and go on those rides. I refuse because there's very little safety in any of these ride designs. I refuse. I don't care. You could pay me $10 million. I will never fucking do it. You got the President of the United States literally come to my house right now and demand I do it, and I tell him he's going to have to shoot me before I get on any of these kind of rides. Just wanted to make that clear real quick. Wow. Well. I probably wouldn't get on those rides either. Uh, I don't want to go on any rides right now, to be honest. Like, this topic's making me not like amusement parks. <laughs> I don't blame you. Let's continue on. All right. Um, sorry. No, I don't blame you, Cole Fire. That, that last story was mind-numbingly fucking stupid, and that ending was even... Like, that's the kind of ending that M. Night Shyamalan writes in his movies. Play the video, play the video, play the video, play the video. At her grandfather's funeral, Kaziah found the lively and vibrant fair to be the ideal place to unwind. As they wandered through the colorful attractions and bustling crowds, neither of them could have predicted the terrible tragedy that the fireball ride would bring them. Tyler, an 18-year-old Columbus, Ohio, fresh high school graduate, had recently signed up for the Marines. His proud moment of enlisting was captured in a photo he posted on Facebook. The picture shows him carrying a plaque while wearing his Marine Corps uniform. Tyler and Kazan He's not wearing a Marine Corps uniform. He's wearing his civilian clothing. An exhilarating attraction that swung riders 40 feet into the air while spinning them at high speeds. Little did they know this ride would malfunction disastrously. Oh, no. A catastrophic outcome. At first, everything seemed normal as the fireball began its rotation. However, a sudden, strong shaking disrupted the ride and alarmed the passengers. And then it happened. A whole section of the roller Holy coaster snapped, flinging passengers into the air. Tyler was thrown with such force that he never stood a chance. Keziah, Tyler's girlfriend, 
was severely injured in the horrifying accident, suffering severe damage to her pelvis, ankles, and ribs. Jesus. The chaos that followed was beyond description. As emergency responders raced to the site, onlookers watched in shock. But it was too late for Tyler Gerald, who had died upon impact. Pause the it real quick. The investigation that followed showed that the fireball had Pause been it. inspected yeah. and deemed safe by the... So, there's a similar ride that was recently built. Um, I forget the name of it. I think it may have been the uh, Panatonic, I think is what it was called. Panamonium, that's the name of it. And it's a big swing ride like that. That ride got shut down multiple times because Six Flags had experienced similar issues with the carts using test dummies, and they refused to open it until just about the time I was getting let go. And I was like, damn, I wanted to ride that ride. And my point being is that Six Flags understands how to build those rides and how to build them safely. Yeah, um, a parks like this where they just bring in random people who honestly don't know what they're doing, I find leads to a lot of these kind of situations, and that tells yeah. you right there. Like you don't even have to continue the video. I can tell you exactly what happened was that the these connection pieces right there that held the seats in were not properly bolted in or were not properly welded. And the inertia and the force was enough to bust them. And more than likely, I suspect it was bolted in. Because usually when they're welded in, they are much, much stronger. That, and yeah. that unfortunately cost this young gentleman his life and fucked his girlfriend up for the rest of her life. Yeah, but don't they have, like, safety inspections as well? Like, why didn't they, like, when they did a safety, like, when the, like, outsiders did safety inspections on it before they gave the approval, why didn't they, like, catch this? They should have looked at the bolts, see if it was screwed on. Like, this is just simple stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Like, this is simple stuff you should do. Like, I understand, like, running a theme park is hard, but it's like, come on. But well, this is a state stuff. fair. Even see, the thing is, this is, not a, this is not a theme park. This is a state fair. That's what makes this even worse, and that's why like there's not as much safety regulations done with state affairs. To my personal experience, here in Georgia, I'm not sure how Ohio handles it, and I'm sure they will in a moment show us how they handle it. But down here in Georgia, in my experience with state affairs is that they usually don't check the rides as well as they do with theme parks like Six Flags. Like uh, a couple of other smaller amusement parks here in Georgia. It should, though. Like, it doesn't matter. I understand they don't, but they, they should change that because oh, I fully agree. shit like this happens. I fully agree. They should really change it, but good luck with that one, buddy, is what I say to yeah. that. Um, Kofar, you got anything you want to add to this? Oh, yeah. Uh, quite frankly, uh, even not even when a safety inspector mentions it, the unfortunately, not all the time it's taken into consideration, honestly. Uh, as we saw with the last one, a safety inspector really said that it should be recommended for other people of a certain age, and they were actually under that age for kids. And, and then well, that poor kid got killed, and now this young gentleman was pretty much crushed to death, for lack of a better phrase. Yeah, he, and not only that, but he had a whole future. And this is what makes this story sad, because he had a whole future ahead for him. Yeah, even though the military is brutal, the, I still feel like he would have had a better life had he survived and gone into the military. It, this just goes to show you more needs to be done as far as regulations when it comes to amusement rides and amusement parks and state fairs. Yeah, 100%. So, go far. go ahead and continue the video. All right. The Ohio Department of Agriculture a few hours prior to the tragedy. Yet something had gone seriously wrong. Oh, oh yeah, pause it real quick. I meant to read this part. I want to read this part. Records show that inspections were up to date and a state permit had just been issued for the ride. Ohio Department of Agriculture records provided Thursday to the Associated Press show the passing marks of inspection of about three dozen items, including cracks, breaks, proper assembly, and installation. Somebody fucked up big time somewhere along that inspection. 
They were probably lazy. They probably didn't do the inspection right. There's no way. There's just there's no way in fucking hell. No way. But let's continue yeah. the video. I'm sure this is going to get worse. Fair. At KMG International BV, the manufacturer of the Fireball, instructed operators worldwide to cease operations of similar rides. The investigation revealed structural flaws that had gone undetected, raising questions about the frequency and thoroughness of ride inspections. The emotional toll on Tyler's family and friends was immense. Kaziah, Tyler's girlfriend, was devastated to hear about his passing when she woke up in the hospital after undergoing multiple surgeries. The town of Columbus, where Tyler was highly regarded and well-loved, mourned the loss of a bright young man whose destiny was snatched away so suddenly. Following the incident, Amber Duffield, Tyler's mother, and other supporters pushed for stricter this safety laws. This resulted in the Tyler's Law Initiative, which sought to enhance Ohio's safety standards for amusement rides. The purpose right. of the bill was to make sure that operators are held to higher accountability standards and that rides go through more thorough inspections. As the but they should have already done that. Atmosphere ...and rides temporarily closed. The tragedy left an indelible mark on all who attended. For Keziah, who would never regain full mobility, the journey of recovery was both physical and emotional. Yet she found strength in advocating for safety improvements, hoping to prevent future tragedies. Pause it real quick. I think uh, Trident had it best right there when he stated that they should have they should have already been doing it. This was a fucking embarrassment. It is an embarrassment by the state. It is an embarrassment by the manufacturers. It is un fucking reasonable that someone had to die before any real regulations were placed in office. Fuck yep. everyone yeah, who was involved in his death. Point. Praise to the doctors who tried to save his rise. Think, I don't even think his family got any money from it. That's the sad part. The first story they got twenty mil. I don't think this family got any money from it. And that's sad. if there's any corrections on that, I will put it in the comments below. But as far as I'm concerned, I looked into it. I didn't see it. Well, as far as I'm concerned. When it comes to this, um, I'm personally uh, just mind fucking blown. Like the, the level of ignorance and stupidity that caused a young man to lose his life. Uh, yeah. Kofar, you were saying something? Yeah, uh, about the, them not possibly getting money. They could have also just done a mostly private one, too. It is possible oh. there was a private settlement outside of it that was sealed in records, because that's a pretty common thing that happens. Yeah. You could have chose to take a, a settlement Possibly. outside of court. Yeah. And if I was but court, if let's say if they did if let's say if they did not get the money though, if they did, that's good. But if they did not, then that's just even more fucked. That that yeah. just makes that uh, story too fucking ten times worse. But let's continue the story three because I'm sure this is only going to continue to get worse. On the evening of July nineteenth, twenty thirteen. Rosa Ayala Gauna Esparza and her family were visiting Six Flags over Texas and enjoying oh, the rides. This is the original. Late, but before leaving, Rosa and her family decided to try one last ride. Little did they know, this would be Rosa Esparza's last ride ever. Mm -hmm. At 52 years old, Rosa Esparza was on her first visit to Six Flags. She had an adventurous spirit and was always eager to explore new places and experiences. That day, Rosa was visiting the park with her daughter and her son-in-law. Known for its thrilling attractions, the park in Arlington, Texas, was a beloved destination for both locals and tourists. You know my pausing real Texas quick? Giant. That one, what? if I am not mistaken, Six Flags Over Texas is the original Six Flags Park. Yes, Six Flags Over Georgia yeah. was the second one to be built. Yep. And, uh, I've always wanted to visit the original, but I've never really had the money or time. But probably after this story, I'm not quite sure if I want to. I think I might I just stick with it. the one in Georgia, because the one in Georgia, at least wise, takes their safety very seriously. 
Yeah, uh, I've been to this one, and actually, I know precisely which ride and everything. Uh, I already know very much about this case, actually. Uh, well, uh, without spoiling any further, let's continue on the video. All right. <laughs> A hybrid roller coaster combining steel and wood was Rosa's chosen adventure that day. Oh, it kind of looks like the Great American Scream Machine. It replaced the original all wood Texas Giant which was closed due to safety concerns and complaints about its rough ride. The revamped coaster stood 153 feet tall with a 147 foot drop and operated with three trains. Nice. It was about 6.40 p.m. that day when Rosa boarded the ride. Rosa in car three appeared nervous about her safety restraint, according to fellow passenger Carmen Brown. Yep. Rosa expressed concern that her restraint wasn't secure, but a park employee assured her, as long as you heard it click, you're fine. Yes, that's Whoever's usually how that works. Pause real quick, because I actually do got comments on that. So, um, from what I was told from NIF, actually, was that Six Flags, um, the one in Texas, hired anybody. They hired all these dumb kids because NIF actually knew a chick who worked at Six Flags. It was like really young because he was like a kid at the time. I think she was like 18, 19, and she was like operating one of the rides. So, and he said that Six Flags at that this one, because we were watching earlier, he said they'll hire anybody. They'll hire any stupid fuck. Uh, well, since there's some is right on that. so that's probably why the safeties wasn't really taking as serious. Let's see. Um, is, so is, the thing about this particular one, and I recognize the style of uh, seat belting they use, because there's a, a ride here in Georgia that was turned into the Twister Cyclone. Originally, it was all wooden roller coaster, the oldest one at the time, next to the Great American Scream Machine. Both have been renovated. Like I said, it originally was called the Georgia Cyclone. And a little fun story about that one, real quick. We nicknamed it the Hip Breaker because every time you would hit a, a one of the drops, your hip would slide right into the other side of the car, or on the other side, and you would go ah, 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 ah. ah. <laughs> Especially at the very end, you go ah, 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 bam, ah. <laughs> uh, uh, let me anyway on that, if you don't mind. Uh, this actual one here is actually the oldest, one of the oldest long, still standing rides at this sex track. Yeah, like the uh, the Great American Scream Machine is the oldest standing ride in Six Flags over Georgia now because, like I said, the Georgia Cyclone is now the Twister Cyclone, which is ten times better. It is ten times better, but if you're fat, you can't get on the ride. Sorry, I'm being dead serious. I, I know some guys who were pretty heavy and they couldn't get on the ride because the cart couldn't fit them. And I was like, well, it sucks to be you as I ride it like the seventh time in a row. <laughs> um, so quick story about um, one of our um, one of the other stories. Um, one of the other stories actually relates to that. But we'll get to that. when I Yeah. Think. So I'm going to give my so, quick story. I'm going to give my quick story okay. and then um, we can continue on if oh, you want. I'll call for I'll let Tim's talk. Go ahead. So, the very last time the Georgia Cyclone was operated, me, my transistor Gala, my mother, and my stepfather Bodie got. A, I convinced them to get on the ride because this was Christmas season, and we were going to go watch one of our cousins perform in the Christmas special. It was called um, "What's the Spirit of Christmas." And I know the guy who ran the entertainment section. His name is Shane. One, Shane Delancey, one of the nicest gentlemen you'll ever meet. Phenomenal, uh, phenomenal director. Anyhow, so they had used the old carts uh, from the Great American Screen Machine instead of the carts that were specifically designed for the uh, Georgia Cyclone because those carts were being taken and renovated for the new version, the Twister. Um, so instead of having the seat belt and the seat bar, it just had the seat bar. And it would make a click. And if you heard it click, it meant it was supposed to hold. And it would. Except for it couldn't hold my mother and my stepfather because they were big. They were too big for the ride. I was too small <laughs> because, again, the cart wasn't properly designed. Yeah. No one died. Just, just to let you know, no one died on the ride. 
but this is the funny part. So after about 15 minutes of getting the thing to finally click, they give it to all clear, which is what they say, all clear, all clear. If all if all is clear, and please enjoy your ride. That's what you're supposed to say, and then you start the ride. So we started up. We get up to the top, ching, which is when the chain lets the cart go. As we start to hit the hill, the lap bar that mom and buddy were seeing behind us went king, and mom yells out, "Holy shit!" Oh, and buddy elbows the fuck out of her, hooks his foot on the car, and he's like, "Ah, oh god!" And mom's yelling, "Fuck, I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die!" And I'm in the front behind him, not knowing what's happening. I'm dying laughing because I just thought. Because mom had not been on the ride since she was eight years old, and she's in her 60s riding it. So I'm thinking she's just remembering what happened years ago, not that she almost fucking died. Because <laughs> I had no clue, because I couldn't see behind me. My head was stuck against the board, and I was going, Alfred, Alfred, I made a bad decision, Alfred. <laughs> True story. It's I a mean, true story. I mean, I mean, at least they survived. They must have. They must have laughed about it afterwards. Oh, we were laughing about. It. At the time, we were pissed, but when we got home, buddy was laughing his ass off. Mom's like, "I'm never letting." She looked at me, pointed at me, and went, "I am never allowing you to pick another ride for me to go on." I was like, "Look, I just wanted to ride a ride, <laughs> and it was the shortest one." <laughs> true story. It's legitimately a true story. Now you can continue the video, though. All right. At the click, despite her anxiety, the ride commenced. Minutes later, Rose's daughter realized the screams she was hearing weren't filled with joy. No, those were screams of terror. Rose's daughter turned to see how her mother was faring, but she was met with a terrifying sight. Rosa was nearly upside down in her seat, her head near the floor and feet in the air. Two passengers. How the fuck Rosa does that happen? The woman, but couldn't reach her. As That's what I said when I Hill, Rosa first watched it. Ejected from her. Uh, I can interrupt there, uh, but I'm pretty sure it would say. Uh, but like, uh, I'm pretty sure it was the ball not being uh, fully quit down, like they said. It so was. did she go over into the no, cart in front of her? Thing. Um, she even had a concern. Hold on, hold on. She even had concerns, right? They ignored it. Even other people had a concerns, and they ignored it. This is why you. This is why if you work in this profession, you cannot ignore shit like this. No, that the moment there was any kind of concern about that, there should have been a supervisor or lead immediately, or the operator on the vehicle himself should have came over. One of the team members should have flagged the operator. Operator comes over, takes a look, and if they don't think it's safe, they should have radioed for a uh, lead or a supervisor to show up, which then they would have brought a mechanic with them to take a look. And the ride would have ceased operation until they could either deem that the person was safe enough to ride or they would have should have removed them from that cart and put them on the next cart coming up. That's what should have happened. Yeah. That tells you there was a lack of um, a lack of training, a lack of following proper safety protocols. Because those mm -hmm. protocols have been there since 2008. I know because again of the Six Flags I worked at follow the exact same protocols. Yep. Yeah, and these and this happened in 2013, so they can't say, "Oh no, the protocols weren't there." Yeah, they were. Yeah, can't make that argument. Yeah. So totally. you gotta continue though. Proceed. It all felt like pure horror to Rosa's family, who had to helplessly wait for the ride to end, not knowing whether Rosa was dead or alive. When they finally returned to the station, they begged the staff to let them out to help Rosa. Paramedics arrived promptly at 6:45 p.m. But Rosa was pronounced dead at the scene. Her body, partially severed, was found wrapped around a support beam on the roof of the Honky Tonk Tunnel, with tissue scattered over a 75-foot area. Firefighters took an hour to remove her remains due to the severity of the impact. The ride was closed that day, with the Arlington Police Department launching an investigation immediately. They interviewed both witnesses and employees, 
As a result, police uncovered some chilling facts. It was revealed that an employee working the ride that day had noticed Rose's restraint was a little high or not as tight as it should be. Another employee thought the restraint wasn't all the way Pause down it. on her thigh. I want to read this because um, I got some choice words for that employee, but I want to read this first. They didn't secure her tight, one of the employees from the park stated. One of the ladies, she asked her to click her down more than once, and they said, well, as long as you heard the click, you are okay. To that employee, I'm going full screen for this real quick. To that employee, you are a dumbass. You are a grade A, number one, bona fide, first class dumbass. And that's all I got to say to you. You may continue. I agreed. I mean, how the like, how the fuck, like, like if she's having trouble, you're supposed to like, because that's the thing. This ain't just no joke. This ain't no fast food. This is people's lives you're playing with. You gotta make sure if you can't make sure these people are safe. Don't walk in a fucking theme park. A yeah. fucking men. Or work uh, in a different section of the park. On. Go pick up trash and or go sweep is, a and floor. This is probably why, and this is and this is why as well. Like, um, this is why like you can't hire anybody. Like, because Nith said they used to hire anybody over there because he used to live over there. They used to hire anybody in the mama, and this is why you can't do that. Especially professions like this, you gotta train them and make sure they know what they're doing, that they care about their job. Because they don't care, and they're just gonna let shit like this slide. More of this is going to happen in the future. Uh, you remember I said I was going to tell you about that Six Flags incident? I'll tell you now. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go full screen for this. Uh, it was 2018. It was Christmas season. I was with a buddy of mine named uh, Dyke was his last name. I called him. I partially called him that just to be a dick to him. It's not actually how you pronounce his last name, but I did that because I was being a dick to him because it was funny. I really his real name was John, and uh, me and him worked together doing park services. And our job was to clean the bathrooms and ensure that the park was um, sanitary. And when you use the restrooms and you use the little stalls to clean your hands, that they were clean. They were properly sanitized. Uh, we were heading down to the Gotham section of the park, and me and him were talking about horror movies and doing it during Christmas time. Because me and him, used, uh, I used to tell him what I would do if I was Jigsaw, and he would be like, you need to get therapy. I was like, uh, I tried, and the last time I got therapy, I wound up in an alley full of needles. Uh, so as I'm making that joke, this lady comes running up to us. She's like, we need help. We need help. We need help. And I was like, what happened? Uh, apparently, one of the, uh, the rides called the Crime Wave is a swing ride. So when you get on it, you get strapped down by a giant chain on a seat, and they swing you around and around and around. Uh, one of the employees didn't bother to check the chain before they started the ride, so the seven-year-old nearly went flying out of her seat if it weren't for her mom snatching her and holding her down in the seat. Well... As I found out about this, I contact my lead. I contact my supervisor. Uh, I'm calling people. I'm not supposed well, to be yeah, calling. Like, I don't mean to cut you off, but everyone was all right, right? The seven-year-old didn't die, did No. She? The seven-year-old was right there with her mom. She was crying hysterically, and the mother was angry because the 18-year-old who was operating the ride didn't give a flying fuck. And um, like I said, I was calling people, and Six Flags rules, if you're an employee, you're not supposed to be using your phone. I was calling everybody I could think to call, and I was getting them all down there. And um, needless to say, that employee got fired that same day, or that same night, I should say. I don't know what happened as, as far as should. Uh, she should, because it was a she. Um, and... I don't know what happened to the lady, but uh, hopefully if she sees this video, I hope you're doing all right. Uh, and I hope your daughter's doing all right as well. And that's the story. It's pretty short, but it was uh, it was harrowing hearing how they didn't bother to check the safety. Uh, yeah. By the way, I, I will say that... Uh, 
Set Flag still, unfortunately, hires a bunch of young people, but they have added more polar cards on the stuff since they've done this because I've been to it, uh, Set Flag, uh, in te- over Texas, uh, since after this accident. And they now actually have people come up to the actual thing and shake the heck out of the balls to make sure they are secure. Yeah, um, that was like I said. That was added in 2015. In um, 2017 uh, or 2018, uh, the what they did was they would hire 15 and 16 year olds. They would work the concession stands or the food stands, and this was allowed uh, under Georgia law. This is allowed kids to work if they want to work summer jobs. And they want to make a little extra money while they're going to school. Which is perfectly reasonable because they all, all they're really doing is either selling people, they just help people buy stuff or help make food, and that's about it. Uh, 17, 18 year olds up are allowed to do the rides or the scare acting stuff. Yes. And they are trained specifically what to thing, look for. Right? Um, I don't mean I don't mean to shit on young people, but it's like a lot of people in this generation, like a lot of people my age, I'm 19. A lot of people my age do not think what the shit at all. Now, I would not trust anybody my age on a working operating a ride. Like I go to Dollywood, you never see a young person operate. It's always some old fart, but the old farts knew what they were doing, and that's what I could respect. Yeah. It honestly depends on what ride you're going on as to um that also like I said I'm selective on what rides I will go on, what rides I won't. I will never ride the ninja because the ninja is the concussion now they call it the blue laser, that's what they call it. Well originally it was called the ninja. Another quick story. I know a, a lot of st- story time with AJ Tim's over here. Uh, this uh this particular ride was called the ninja and got changed to the blue rays the laser. Um <laughs> We called it the concussion ride or the rocky ride because there was special safety bars uh, built around your head that was supposed to help keep your head still, and there was padding on it. The padding had worn out. So instead of your head being moved gently with the ride, your head instead would bounce around like a fucking basketball. Needless to say, I got knocked out at least twice on that ride. <laughs> Wow. And when I got off of it, I was fucking. This is what I was like. Oh, oh, where the fuck am I? I bet. And Buck was like, "Oh that God, my head!" Wrong. I would not blame. I don't blame you at all for feeling that way. I would have been like, "What the fuck am I?" I probably wouldn't even realize I got knocked out. Oh, I figured it out afterwards. After I got off the ride, I sat down and drank a Coke. And my migraine was fucking running. It was like Hulk Hogan running wild on my head. I was like, what you going to do when migraine mania runs wild on you, brother? Mm. <laughs> All right. Let's continue the video, guys. Yeah. Despite these concerns, park representatives claimed there were no mechanical issues and that the safety system indicated the restraint was locked. However, it was revealed that the safety system wasn't completely reliable since it had malfunctioned earlier that week. Another individual came forward with new information. According to this unnamed woman, her daughter had gone on the ride a week before Rose's horrifying accident and had experienced a similar issue with her restraint in car three the very same car Rosa was in at the time of her accident. Despite these reports, the police concluded there were no criminal misconduct, ruling Rosa's death an accident. In the meantime, Rosa's family filed a lawsuit against Six Flags, seeking at least $1 million in damages. Despite the lawsuit, the park announced the new Texas Giants reopening less than two months later. Wow. Safety measures, including redesigned restraints and seat belts. In November 2014, the family settled their lawsuit. I'm never going on that ride. With the settlement including a payment, but no admission of fault. Really? You know what? I should do a live stream going to Six Flags after this. March 24, 2022. Oh, and Tyre Sampson was visiting Icon Park in Orlando, Florida during his spring break. Oh, this is the trial. This is the trial. His trip to Florida was supposed to be a joyful escape with family friends, but it ended in tragedy. Tyre wasn't your usual 14-year-old. 
He was the kind of young man who stood out. At six feet and five inches and 383 oh, pounds, wow. Tyre was also known for his friendly personality and gentle nature. He's a big fella. Which had earned him the nickname Gentle Why does, Hold on, pause Tyre real quick. Promised... Why, does the, why do bad things happen to good people and not to the bad people who deserve it? Because this world it's is like, broken. This guy seems like a good kid and shit. And it, why him? Why can it not be someone who deserves it? Because this world is broken and good people get punished for being good people while horrifically cruel individuals are rewarded with the greatest treasures known to mankind. Yeah, it's just sad. I like, mean, like, like the Bible said it. The, the Bible literally uh, said it. Evil will be rewarded because of who rules the earth. Uh, that's sad, but we could continue. Yeah. Football player and an intelligent student with a bright future. On I would March like 24th, to say this hand. Tyre was visiting Icon Park, a popular entertainment complex which boasts over 50 attractions. That day started out with Tyre and his friends going on various rides. However, Tyre's size led to him being turned away from two due to weight restrictions. At some point, Tyre decided to ride mind, the Orlando Freak. I'm pausing it real quick. Towering drop I was going to read the text, but never mind. Continue. Oh, uh, my bad. Oh, no, no, just continue, just continue. Three months prior. At that point, the Orlando Free Fall was the world's tallest freestanding drop. Oh, no. Rising 430 feet and plummeting 400 feet at 75 I miles per hour. Probably happen. The tire didn't feel that excited about this particular ride. He felt something was amiss. He felt uneasy about the harness that seemed too small for his stature. Pause it real quick. A chilling photo taken just before the ride shows right. tires. This is why I want you to pause it real quick. Because I've got some. Oh, nice. So Six Flags has one. Yeah, well, it has a swing ride that does a dropping effect, but that's a slow one. It slowly descends. The, the only drop one there is called Acrophobia, and that one always uh, like 100 feet. And that one, the safety harness on it, um, not only do you get a seat belt, but it also hooks down and it has another seat belt that hooks up into it. And then when it locks in, it locks in. You ain't leaving that seat. And uh, the way it works is that it slowly spins you up until you get to the top of it. And then the person gives a fake countdown. I know because I went on it one time and the person like, 10, 9, 8, I hate life. Bam. <laughs> I was like, oh, you motherfucker! <laughs> I, was, I screamed that out loud. Oh, you motherfucker! <laughs> uh, my brother Roger uh, over the side of Buck was going, fuck! <laughs> and Buck's like, woo! I'm like, Buck, why are you cheering? <laughs> Uh, but that's the. I think this one is more closer related, closer similar to the one that they had at the Six Rides in Texas, which is known as the Superman. Oh yeah, the Superman drop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen that one. Uh, the point I'm bringing yeah. up is that the, I brought up a, a, an example of a ride that's properly built that has proper safety mechanisms. Unlike this one, which clearly right. shows it does not have the proper safety mechanism set up. There is no seat belt right there holding that in. There's no other locks holding that down to ensure. All you got is those two little bars. That's fucking it. Yeah, no. Yeah, I would not like, trust yeah, this ride. It definitely just shows like they didn't set the, like the, the original Six Flags was they didn't give a fuck about. And I was told from Niv too who like lived in Texas and knows about this stuff that Six Flags never really cared about safety at all. The one in Texas. Well, the one in Georgia, I can uh, promise you, cares a lot about safety. Cares a I mean, lot. They, they, they care to a Boy, they, well, This ain't Six Flags, actually. This is a Orlando Park. Park. But uh, anyhow, let's um, continue on. All right. He even told a friend that the harness was moving and asked the friend to tell his parents that he loved them in what seemed a foreboding premonition. As the ride began, a video captured the horrific events. Oh! He slipped from his seat. I think I've the seen this. To cling to the seat, but it was no use. He fell to the ground, a scene that left onlookers and friends in stunned silence. Emergency services quickly arrived, but Tyre was pronounced dead at the hospital. An autopsy later revealed that he died from blunt force trauma with multiple severe injuries. Following the event, the Orlando... Pause it. So, 
I want to read this real quick for you guys. I'm sure this is going to be great. Yeah. Knowing Florida. It was the Florida Department of Agriculture and, Co- and Consumer or Customer Services is actively investigating the incident along with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. I'm noticing I'm noticing a theme here with ag- Department of Agriculture of almost every state so far that's been brought up. I'm yeah. just noticing a theme, and the theme seems to be the lack of properly investigating these amusement parks and rides. Yeah. Yeah. This is like turning into like uh, the show a show that I watched called The Casual Criminalist, where the guy goes over like, all kinds of criminal cases, and the majority of the time the police are just extremely fucking lazy, or they botch the evidence. So even though the person should be convicted, but because they didn't get the evidence the proper way, the person gets off scot free, or they. Fucking yeah. take forever to finally catch the and person. Be, like these people should have been punished. The water, per, the water perk guy, the first story, he should have been punished for sure for making that shitty, like that that shitty ride in the first place. Yeah, all three of them Especially should be in jail. All three should be in jail for manslaughter, but they're not, unfortunately, and that's yeah. a, a shame. Um, Cold fire. You got anything you want to add to this? Uh. Well, I know for a fact, uh, if I remember correctly on this, the reason why it's the Department of Agriculture with a lot of these uh, uh, festival type things is because of the fact that they are, for some real reason, under the jurisdiction because they are festival. So, uh, uh, so. The reason why they're underneath the agriculture departments is because it that often deals with parks, amusement, theme parks, and um, nature in general. So they are, they are technically supposed to ensure that parks of any kind are safe for people to go to. And the majority of that is usually theme they parks. They do a shitty job at it. Because often they're either under-trained or they don't have the proper um, education, depending on the department, because I've seen this shit go down in other places before. And there's another channel we should definitely check out called The Funk Land, which goes over a park that had a lot of people die. And the agriculture department oh, could not yeah, do we much. we could definitely cover that on a future episode for sure. But um, anyhow... Let's go ahead and continue the video. All right. Away in the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, as well as the Orange County Sheriff's Department, started their investigations. According to forensic experts who discovered that the sensors on tire seat had Pause been it. manually modified, the ride had continued to function even though there was a dangerous space between Pause tire it. Real seat and harness. I want to read this. What? What? Manual adjustments have been made to the sensor in the seat in question that allowed for the harness to restrain opening almost double that of the normal restraining opening range. That The whole damn seat fell off. That one not yeah. a safety belt. That was the whole damn fucking seat fell off of the ride. So you're telling yeah. me there was two safety connections on that and no one bothered to double nope. check that? They were lying. Fuck that. And fuck whoever made this ride, too. Fuck them. I want... Uh, that's fuck them. Just... How, how? Hey, you could continue. I don't know how. Just... This shit does blow my mind. I'm oh, my God. Lie, y'all. Oh, my God. Like you trying to say... Let's just... Oh, God. This modification gave the misleading impression that the safety mechanisms were engaged. Tire's weight also surpassed the ride's 286-pound weight restriction by 96 pounds. They didn't check the weight. The critical they, they, they let him on Tires knowing he was... The tire was never informed about the weight limit in a wrongful death case they filed against the owner, manufacturer, and landlord of the ride. On August 17th, friends and family gathered to celebrate what would have been Tyre's 15th birthday. Wait, don't pause the exit. It's the important part's about to come up. Praying in his memory in an effort to stop similar tragedies in the future. State Representative Geraldine Thompson declared her intention to introduce the Tyre-Sampson law, 
which would strengthen security protocols at theme parks. Tyre's death was both unusual and avoidable, Thompson emphasized. It was revealed in March 2023 that Tyre's mother, Nekia Dodd, has reached a settlement with Icon Park and the Orlando Eagle Drop Slingshot, the owner of the Freefall Ride. However, the case against the ride's manufacturer continues. A jury trial date has been set for January 21st, 2025 in Orlando. The trial is estimated to last two to three days. Pause it. Pause it now. All right. The reason I told you to pause it so aggressively because I do live near, I'm not going to say where, but I do live like close where I can go to the trial and I will be documenting the trial live. I'll be going to the courthouse and I'll be appearing to the trial. You will see a Raven cast exclusive of me at that trial. And I hope justice is served for the family. I will be providing support for the family as well as documenting what happens and making, and hopefully making sure that that person gets fucking called out and fucking, you know, fined and put in jail and whatever. Like they need to pay this family money because they shouldn't have not lost a son just because they fucking fucked up a shitty ride. Like that's just not okay. So yeah. I'll be going to that trial. So unfortunately this is not a criminal trial you were talking about. We're talking about a civil trial. But hopefully the yeah. family does get restitution for what happened because that was not negligence. That was malicious negligence. That was horrendous. I know, trial and I know they're not gonna go to jail, but they should at least get like twenty million, I feel like. That's just my personal opinion. Ah, twenty million it ain't enough to replace a life like that. That is like that is fucking. No, that ain't enough. But like, that's still like that's still better than nothing. I mean, on. I mean, honestly, I'll be honest. Uh, let's say I had a son, right, and he and and he died because of a ride like that. No, not even a not even a trillion dollars would replace a life. Because money's useless. A life is definitely worth more than money, hundred percent. And I do feel bad for this family, but they at least need something. They need to make this park go bankrupt. They also need to shut down this ride and never operate that ride again. But yeah, I will be at the trial. I will be documenting it. So make sure January 21, you, you watch the live stream and you subscribe to this channel so you guys know that I will be there. But yeah, we can continue the video because we're going to go to our last story. Um, this is the last one, y'all. On June 28, 2008, Asia LeSean Ferguson IV arrived at Six Flags Over Georgia with his friends from Oakey Springs Baptist Church. His oh, parents, Asia Ferguson III and Letha Ferguson, were also on the trip. It was a Saturday, a day meant for thrills and fun. Okay, yeah, but it was would some... soon turn into a tragedy that no. This one is the one I recognize. Asia, a 17-year-old from Springfield, South Carolina, right was an outgoing, carefree adolescent yep. who was often grinning and eager to lend a hand to others. Among his friends, he was well known for his academic success and for his intense love of basketball. Asia and his friends excitedly toured the park on that fatal day, their laughter resonating across the rides and attractions. They were drawn to one of the park's most popular roller coasters. The Batman Ride. The Ride. The ride was renowned for its high speeds and 360 degree twists, yep. promising an adrenaline rush unlike anything else. Oh yeah, I've been in this road. Pause it real however, quick. However, Asia and a companion ended up separate. I've been on that ride probably at least 20 times in my life and it is always fun to get on although I do recommend you tie your shoes down really tight and if you got velcro pull them really tight otherwise you will be missing a shoe I've seen that happen multiple times where there will be guests missing a shoe fall off once but not not six flags but at Dollywood I had a shoe fall off yeah like on the wild eagle um but that was Crocs, because my dumbass decided to wear Crocs. Yeah, I don't wear Crocs in six flags. Uh, another real fun story, real quick. And I, I know I'm interjecting a lot of comedy into a very, a lot of very serious situations. But like I said, I worked at this park. I know these rides personally. Um, the Goliath ride that I was talking about earlier. Um, on the first initial drop, there's a, a giant net that catches stuff that falls off the ride. 
There's I've seen everything from brand new iPhones to thousand dollar watches to people's toupees and wigs. <laughs> I'm talking wow. about expensive wigs. No, oh well, yeah, well, hold on, hold on. Um, Nith actually told me that at the Six Flags in Texas, they would have this like bucket where they would just collect all people's cracked cell phones and just put it and replace it like every few months, and they would just people's like cell phones because they cracked it. Oh, um, oh if yours did right, that. Right, um, yours mine did doesn't. That. Mine does have a lost and found, but it's only if it lands on the ground or lands where a security guard can uh, safely go in and catch it. The um in Texas it, um, and the Texas one's different because if your phone like lands the ground, even if it's not broken, they'll claim that shit. Be like, yep, it's property of ours because it hit the ground. Too bad. No, Georgia, we we if you uh, can prove that it is your property, uh, we give it back to you. But uh, but people often don't go to lost and found. No, no, they Texas. don't. Um, another little quick story. Um, one of the wig makers. Um, this is right before Fry Fest started up in 2019. One of the wig makers working on uh, a couple of the new masks that we were going to be wearing uh, came out and was asking me if I knew whose phone it, uh, this phone was. And this phone looked like the Incredible Hulk fucking kicked the damn thing across the football field. It was that broken. Apparently, it fell from the Goliath ride. Bounced off the roof of the Crystal Pistol, which is the iconic um, musical theater place, hit the air conditioner of the building, went through the window and inside, and landed perfect on the table. And I was like, what the fuck was that? Were angels playing hockey or something? <laughs> Huh? We have um, which I don't know. Why no, I don't true make story. This a rule at Six Flags. Hold on. Well, I don't know why they don't make this a rule at Six Flags, but at Dollywood, you was allowed to have your phone on the ride. They made you. Put no, that yeah, shit no. Water. It's actually on the signs, on the signs of all the rides, and you're told this before you get on the ride. Take all your stuff off of you, all your personal in- information. Put it in the lockers That's at the beginning of the live, or put it in the station where the cups are. But the employees are not responsible if your stuff gets stolen you're told yeah, that and there's signs and there are signs and they, uh, the guy didn't show it here but on the side wall where the uh, person is this, the operator there's a sign right above there that says no flash photography do not carry cell phones glasses secure any objects that uh, may be fragile or um, right, yeah. irreplaceable basically yeah it's uh, it's on so uh, the one so it's just pe- so it's just dumbasses not following that rule. Pretty much so. It's yeah. dumbasses not following the rule, and then well. All right. Anyways, we can continue though because I do yeah. want to get off. I gotta take a sh- shit and go to bed. Oh lord. Go ahead. Separated from the group and wandering into an area forbidden to the public. Yeah. Do not go it's into the danger zone. Asia chose to jump over two six foot barriers that were marked with authorized personnel only and do not enter signs. Some people think he was attempting to find a hat he misplaced during the trip, while others think he was attempting to enter the ride or use another route to the parking lot. Whatever the reason, what he did took him into a... Oh, honestly, I don't blame the park for this one. Hold on, you can pause it. Extreme danger. That's a different Batman ride, if, though. If there's a do not... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I want to say this. I want to make this... If there's a do not enter sign... Do not enter, but this guy's a dumbass. I'm sorry. Out of all the five, he's the one I feel least sorry for because you're telling me you went into the ride where the ride was coming at you and you saw do not enter sign danger and you entered anyways. I don't care if you're 17, 5, 2, even even my fucking three-year-old cousin knows not to do that shit. Like you must you you're asking for it. I'm sorry. I know I'm being mean, but you are asking for it. Like this saying a situation where we could sue the park or do anything. Like you asked for it. I'm sorry, but you this was on you. This was on him. Like, he um, shouldn't have done that. Do you, do you, uh, I know the full story and go ahead and spoil it a little bit for you. It was not just because people think they was. The family said that he was apparently he had a special hat that he liked that he had bought from one of the concession stands that he was wearing. That hat flew off when he was on the ride because he didn't properly secure it to his uh, seatbelt like they kept telling him to and like the operator kept telling him to. 
So he decided to ignore the security guards because he originally asked the security guard. The security guard told him, I have to wait until the ride is finished operating, and then I can ask the operator to cease commission, then I can step in and get it for you. While the security guard went to go do that, and from what I understand, this is what was told to me by some of the higher officials up at Six Flags. I'm not going to give any names, but this is what was told to me. Mm-hmm. He chose to ignore the security guard's warning about jumping over those fences, hopped over them that had barbed wire. They had barbed wire on them, and he hopped over and got in there, got the hat, and that's, that's when the it. cart. I'm sorry. I am hit. so. I am. I hate to say this, but that's his fault. I'm sorry, but I don't feel sorry for him. For all the and family got a $5 million dollar settlement from Six Flags. Bro, that's fine. They should have not got no money. I'm sorry. Hey, Asia, if you're listening from heaven, you're a dumbass. You're a fucking dumbass. Like, you basically gave this park legal trouble because you wanted to be a fucking stupid little prick and ignore safety precautions. Like, bro, I get your 17, but it's like, bro, 17 year old me would have not done that. 17 year old me would have listened to the operators. Like, you're dumb. You're dumb. I'm sorry, kid, but you're dumb. I mean, honestly, Honestly, I mean, I don't know. Do I think you should have died? Because, do I think he should have died because of it? Because everyone makes dumb mistakes. But it's like, this is what happens when you don't when you ignore um, the operators and the employees of the establishment and they tell you, "Hey, don't jump that. That's dangerous," and you do it anyways. That's kind of your fault. Yeah, like I said, I don't. I feel bad for the family because he lost a son. Absolutely, I feel I absolutely feel horrible. But I, I don't have for him because I don't have sympathy for him. But I have sympathy the for the mother. I don't think he should have died because of it. I have more sympathy for you have um, sympathy for the mother. That, and also I have sympathy for the writers who witnessed it. Because they witnessed him getting decapitated. Oh, yeah, also, because that's the thing. Um, because that's the thing. Um, I bet you, like, when he got hit, a lot of the riders like had blood, some of his body parts. And sh- like, only the front riders did. Because this dumb kid did not want to listen. Because well, he did not want to listen. Only the uh, front riders did. Okay, if he would have listened, he would still been alive today. Yeah, he, he would still be alive, and he would. And he more likely would have got that hat back. And, that, yeah. and the family wouldn't have lost the yeah, son. Yeah, he would have got the hat back as a security guard probably found it, but he didn't listen, so he just died for no reason. Like, there was no reason yeah. to do that at all. You there know, was like, no. Like, you could, he could have still been alive, had a happy life, and et cetera. I don't know too many people who are going to excuse what he did. Well, I'm sure there's going to be somebody in the comment section going to be like, well, you people are unsympathetic to his death. You people don't care. Uh, and to those people, I'm going to say, look, dude, if, there, if there's a reason why you don't go breaking into the White House, so why the hell would you go to the danger section of the amusement park where the ride actually operates? Why would you ignore safety instructions yeah, that are designed to keep that, you oh, safe? Oh, hold on, I want to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to say, hold on, I want to say this too. I am not saying that I support him dying in any way. So if any dumb a log or any dumbass tries that in my comment section, you're just being dishonest because I still have said I still I, I don't think he should have died over this dumb mistake because it was a dumb mistake. But it's like we can't feel bad and playing the park and moral fag about the park being like not doing its job when he's when it's his fault that he died. Like I'm sorry. I know this is the hard truth that y'all don't want to hear. And if the family's watching, I'm sorry for saying it, but it's kind of his fault because he should have not went there to begin with. You shouldn't have gone to that section of the ride. But like I said, I have sympathy for the mother, and I'm sorry for her loss. I Um, have sympathy for the mother, too, because no mother should go through that. Oh, yeah, and also the father. Hold on, hold on. If If you're watching this somehow... I just know, like, I do feel bad that your son died, and I wish he did not die, even over a dumb mistake like this. Because, you know, I think he, he could have learned. And if he just got injured and went to the hospital and then got out and lived a healthy life, he probably would learn a lesson. Like, I don't think anyone should die over dumb decisions like this. But it's like, at the same time, it's like, you can't, we can't blame the park. Like, I can't sit there and say, ah, the park's a piece of shit. Because I've done that the last four stories. I can't do with this story because it's it is his fault. Like I'm sorry, it just is. 
I'm gonna say something real quick. Uh, I like why did any of the people on that ride that wound up being hit have any of the uh, trauma, what they might have gotten trauma wise paid off? Um, I'm not aware of anyone that was on that was the ride that was any of the riders that got anything uh, for the experience. Okay, I'm okay, not aware. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on. The riders can't get anything because technically they wasn't injured. They just had the, his blood splattered on them, which is still like traumatizing. But I don't, I don't know if you can get money from that or not. I'm not really a legal expert, so I don't know. But I've never heard of anyone getting money for just because they had blood splattered on them. Uh, from what I remember being told about the story, again, from the higher-ups when I was asking him about it, because uh, I knew the guy who actually oversaw the building of the Batman ride. He was one of the lead engineers. Um, uh, from when I was talking to him about it, he was telling me, he was like, uh, from what I understand, the riders didn't they got like complimentary tickets if I remember correctly complimentary tickets and like free drinks stuff like that but um as far as the family was concerned he felt absolutely horrible he's like the kid broke the rules and got killed but it's a tragedy that should have never happened and um yeah. that's why they've strengthened the security railings around there and now the, instead of barbed wire being straight it's now set at an angle that's designed to keep you from being able to reach up because the original way the fence was set was the bob wire went straight up and wrapped around instead of being angled. So now, yeah, but they don't, but they don't expect anybody to be a dumbass. Like, and I hate using that word, but it's like you gotta call it what it is. He was being a dumbass. He was, and I'm not trying to shame him or name call or anything, but it's like he was just being dumb. He was just being stupid. Do I think he should have died because of it? No. I wish he would still be alive so he knows, hey, that was stupid. Um, and he could have lived a better life and not done that shit again. But it's like, if he would have never done it, he would have still been alive. His mother would have been happy. Like, I feel bad. Like, the real victims of the situation is the writers that, you know, had to experience all the blood on them and shit. And the family, too, because of his dumb decisions. The, the writers that experienced yeah. the death of the poor child and the family who lost the yeah, son. Yeah, and that shit. And even then, like, even let's say the death is, like, your fault. I still don't agree with people dying because, like, I think, you know, everyone should have a chance. Like, even if they do something stupid like that, I think they should have a chance of still living because, yeah, um, he should have been old enough to know. But it's like, he's, he's only 17, so, like, everyone makes dumb mistakes. Like, I don't think just a dumb mistake should just end your life, but that's just how the world works sometimes. Well, um, anyhow. Anyways, you can continue and finish the video. Yeah. ...when the ride was operating. Around 2 p.m. that afternoon, Asia was hit by one of the ride's speeding trains, which was moving at almost 50 miles per hour. Yep. The impact was lethal, decapitating the 17-year-old instantly. Witnesses stared in shock, not understanding how the scene had gone from happiness to disaster so quickly. A nearby Marietta police officer who was off duty called for assistance right away. But even though park security and rescue services responded quickly, nothing could be done for Asia who was pronounced dead at the scene. The subsequent investigation sought to piece together the events preceding Asia's untimely demise. Officials at Six Flags highlighted the multiple warnings and barriers put in place to stop these kinds of things, pointing out the obvious signage and fenced off sections. Asia's death was deemed an accident by the Cobb County Medical Examiner, who verified that the cause of death was blunt force trauma. trauma. For Asia's family, the loss was incomprehensible. His father, heartbroken and seeking answers, spoke of his son's infectious happiness and the bright future that had been stolen from him. Friends mourned the loss of a boy who was always stolen. lend a hand, recalling moments shared on the basketball court and in the classroom. Six Flags Over Georgia temporarily closed the Batman ride out of respect for Asia's family, while state officials ordered a thorough inspection of the attraction. The park faced scrutiny and potential legal challenges, as the incident highlighted the balance between thrill-seeking and safety. Even more, state regulators but decided the park had to increase the size and number of warning signs near the ride in order to prevent others from suffering the same end. Okay. 
There we go. All right, you can um, oh, yeah, just yeah, leave it there. Enjoy. You can end the sh- okay, end the stream, end the stream. All right. Anyway, anyways, um, before we end the recording, I just want to give my final thoughts. Then you can give your final thoughts, Temps, and you can give your final thoughts, Kofar. My final thoughts on the on the whole thing. First of all, this story, like the last story we just covered, um, the guy was being dumb, and I and I feel bad for like anybody. I'm sure there were children on that ride that had blood splattered all over them, and their parents have to deal with that shit with their child being traumatized for the rest of the fucking life. I hope that was worth it, getting a fucking hat. Like, I know I'm being a dick, but I'm just, like, how do you think like that? Like, the other four stories, yes, criticize the parks, fucking, you know, shit on them, especially the first guy, the first three guys. They should be in jail for what they, for even, like, not even caring about safety. But this story, I can't really hate the Six Flags in Georgia for it because... They didn't do nothing wrong. They shouldn't even have legal trouble because of this because it wasn't their fault. They had warning signs. They had a barbed wire fence. The, the Asia is 17, so it's not like he's a dumbass. He he should have known, hey, um, David said he was a smart kid in school too, so he should have definitely known not to jump a barbed wire fence to just get a fucking hat when a security guard was going to get that shit for him anyways. Like, I don't know. That's just that's, It's just dumb. It's just really dumb. What's your opinions on this whole thing? Like, will y'all be riding amusement parks after this? Because I'm not. <laughs> so, as far as I'm concerned, um, the thing about uh, the first floor, to go over the first one, uh, as far as my take on the first one, all three gentlemen should have been in prison for manslaughter. The fact that they're not in prison demonstrates the lack of justice. The second one, in my opinion, mm-hmm. demonstrates the reason why agriculture departments should have more regulations, should have better trained individuals, and in my opinion, law enforcement should also be involved when it comes to investigating a lot of this stuff. As far as the third one is concerned, um, that was the one at Six Flags Over Texas. Um, that is a perfect example of the reason why there was a lot more safety measures put in place, why people should be more heavily trained, and why I made the statement when people asked me my opinion of how uh, what Six Flags could do to improve. I stated two things, teaching customer service, teaching and safety. Teach them how to do better customer service, how to be presentable, even when the customer is a fucking prickhead who is a useless piece of trash, that you show them the respect because when you do that, you make the park look good, you make you look good, you make your coworkers look good, and you show how much of a dickhead he is. And that's how every job is. But uh, to continue on, as far as the fourth one is concerned, that was a bullshit tragedy. Should have never happened. That whole fucking park, in my opinion, deserves to suffer the consequences of going bankrupt. And those yeah. people find a new job because that should have never fucking happened. That gentleman did not Agreed. deserve to die and I, and I will for be, no reason. And I, and I hate to interrupt, but I will be at the trial, y'all. I'll try my best to be at the trial. So stay tuned. Raven Cast News will be on the scene. And I'll have, and I'll be contacting more people to come with me. But we'll plan that as it goes. But January twenty first, I will be there, hundred percent. But anyways, you can give your opinion on the fifth one, then I'll ask Cold Fire, and then we'll wrap uh, it up. Go so, ahead. as far as the fifth one's concerned, when I first heard of the story, I originally had a lot of sympathy for him, and I despised the park I was working at. But when I spoke to more and more of the engineers and some of the people who worked there, when it went down, I have learned. Uh, like I said, I learned that he went after the hat and he ignored the warning signs. He ignored the people who told him not to do it. Because from, if I remember correctly, in the uh, the written version on, I believe it's Wikipedia, it stated that his friends told him not to do it, but he ignored them as well and chose to do it. So yeah, that's on him. Like I'm sorry. I know like people, some jackasses in the comments can be like, "Oh my God, trains make a fun someone's death." First of all, no, because I, I really wish he was alive. Because I really wish he would just went to the hospital and learned. Because I think you know every every person should live the full hundred years of life. But back to the point, the reason why I'm so critical of it because it's like that's the thing. First 
first of all, you're putting your family through hell. You put random ass people and children, because children ride that ride. There's probably a bunch of children that got blood splattered all over them. Young uh, ass children. Uh, just to interrupt you to real quick. That rest of their life. Just to interrupt you real quick. No one under the age of 13 is allowed to ride that ride. Just to let you know. Well, still, no. Even if it's someone that's like 13, 14, 15. Like, I know. 15. Like, you have like, to be at like, least 15 to ride that ride. Well, even still, like 15, 16, that, like, that's still a trauma. Even as an adult, that's still trauma. Like, either way, like, he's still fucked a lot of people's lives up by doing that dumb shit. Like, you didn't just fuck up your own life. You fucked up your families and random ass people you don't even know. I, th- I, 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 I like, could be I mistaken. Really bad for him. Uh, I could be mistaken, but I remember also hearing apparently the operator... Uh, that one in particular was either uh, fired or was let go after that as well. Why? He didn't do nothing. I forget what the reason was. It was separate to the incident, but people tried oh, to connect it, it to the incident. If it was because of the incident, I would have went off. I probably would have gone his job. I would probably start a move, a song, go for me, get his job back. Because honestly, it's like, no, it's not. Why? Honestly, it's not worth working at Six Flags to be dead honest with you. But um, I remember hearing that about him fucking up something else, and he got fired the same day. I was like, okay, okay. And the reason well, I brought that was because I asked him, was like, was it because of the incident? He's like, no, he so fucked can, up. Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, so we can end it. Cold fire, what's your opinion on the whole thing? Well, uh, for the most part, that first one, uh, a lot of bad shit with that one. Not gonna lie. Like, a lot of that frags just by looking at it for me. I would never touch that one. Not gonna lie. Nope. <laughs> and then the, uh, and I, I completely feel sorry for the uh, on the first one with what happened to every uh, kids and stuff. All right, like mm-hmm. second one that was uh, more or less, yeah, fucking bad as well. But like it is more of a fact that okay. it was the Agicos. What was the name of the? Comp- Ad, uh, manufacture agriculture people or whatever that that mm-hmm. more or less they'll fall on that <laughs> yeah I would say oh. third one was the six fragged one right yes yeah it was the Texas one that that one is I am very much aware of a lot of what happened with that one yeah because you live yeah. there Yes, because of, and quite frankly, the, they also uh, did not take in, since she is a hefty woman, they didn't take that into consideration on the ride either. Not at all, nope. Might have uh, interject yeah, real quick? I she was overweight as well for the ride. Yeah. You might have interject real quick? Uh, mistaken, I may be mistaken, but wasn't she uh, cut in half, basically? <laughs> She, I believe, was cut in half as well as completely thrown off, like, and hit, like, up against a... Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the first bar that would have had, like, the sign and everything, she got flung up into it, decapitated, or I should say literally split in half, and then the bottom half of her landed into the... Card. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Ugh. the bottom half ended in caught, and then when they went and did the like little tron at the end at high speed before it hits the brakes, because I've been on this yeah. ride, that uh, the rest of the body just shot out of the car. Yeah, Jesus. Anyways, what's your opinion on the fourth or fifth one? Because I do gotta go. I don't mean to rush. And then the fourth one. Uh, quite frankly, that that. That just really track it, tragic it mm-hmm. on the uh, what happened to that guy and uh, I feel completely bad, especially yeah. since he was a seemed like a very good guy. I would even want to talk to. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm gonna go to his trial because it's in my area and also he seemed like a good guy. And who knows, maybe I'll also throw some extra money to the family i gotta seal my plans i gotta plan this out because this ain't planned out because you know i just thought about going today but i will be going like i promise y'all i'll be going but what's your opinion on the fifth one fifth one I, i'm gonna be brutally honest Hill. the kid Go was ahead. not being smart, smart. 
at it, Adam. No, you're just being dumb, and I know there's going to be people being, disagreeing, being like, oh, why are you making fun of his death, even though we're not? But it's just like, I'm not even making fun of it, it's just like, it is his own fault. Like, I gotta be pretty honest, I don't care if it gets me hate or not. Like, if you are doing something dumb and you get killed because of it, and I cover it on my show, I'm going to be honest and be like, yeah, it sucks that you died, but you that's what you get for if not for not uh, like listening to your friends or the security guard unfortunately uh yeah i feel sorry for, for the family and also yep, I, feel I feel sorry for, for the, the family too and, and it's not line, and but- I- I don't even I like I said I don't even wish the guy dead like I don't I didn't I wish he did not have to die because of it like I wish he would have you know been smart or or like at least been hospitalized so he would have you know had the lesson had to slap on the wrist and then got out of the hospital and is healthy and could do whatever he wants and do better because that's always why I don't wish harm on nobody well uh, but, call uh, fire to finish okay. your uh, point of view but but pretty much uh, when it comes down to it, uh, uh, what well, kids were dumb. Uh, unfortunately, dumb shit does get you. Unfortunately, killed at times if it's that dumb. And and uh, I mean I feel bad for mainly the family and the bridals, but like. The kid in question, me personally, I'm not too, but yeah, he probably didn't need to die, but I don't feel too bad about it. I cook. Yeah, yeah, it was like, I don't like, I don't think Six Flags is at fault for it, and people saying that Six Flags is at fault for it is stupid. Yeah. Anyways, that's it for us tonight. You know, it's been a great show. Um, I'm never going to amuse my parks again, chat. And yeah. Anyways, it's been me, Triton, Coal Fire, Tims. If you like the show, make sure you hit the like button. And if you enjoy it, you subscribe. And if you dislike the show, hit the like button anyways, because dislike button is gone. It's been me, your boy, Triton. Comment your thoughts down below, and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.